The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Kara Ustaros here with realagriculture.com. I am back here today with another Wheat School episode and I have here with me Jeremy Boychin, who's an agronomy research extension specialist with Alberta Wheat and Barley Commissions. We are here today to count tillers and kind of look at where your yield comes from in your crop. What can you tell me? Yeah, Kara, we you know what, today I want to talk a little bit about maybe plant morphology, plant physiology, and how that ties into the decisions we make around fungicide. Fungicide applications, whether we should be making fungicide applications, how do we know we're at risk and we need to make applications, and when should we be applying, um, and kind of where the research directs us on um, how to make those decisions. Um, so when we think about protecting yield from disease, one of the first things we want to understand is where is our yield actually coming from? Um, and when we start thinking about that, then we can start making decisions on how we're going to look at the plant to assess whether we're at risk or not. Um, so if we get into the crop um, and take a look at uh, the wheat plants, um, you know, it always helps to pull kind of one of these wheat plants up and maybe I have a couple here. Um, but one of the common themes we'll talk about is flag leaf um, versus penultimate leaf versus anti-penultimate leaf. And what we're talking about there um, is essentially the flag leaf is the top leaf of the plant. It's the last leaf that comes out before we see head emergence. Um, so this one actually has a little bit of grasshopper damage on it, as you can see. Um, so we've lost some of that photosynthetic area, whether that'll relate to yield damage, um, enough to warrant spraying, unsure. Uh, and then we get into um, the penultimate, which is essentially the next leaf down from the flag leaf. Uh, so this leaf down here and then anti-penultimate um, would be the third leaf down um, and then there's F4 uh, which would be the lowest uh, leaf here before we kind of get, in, get into the tillering leaves which most of them have, have kind of died back at this point. Um, so when we think about yield contribution when we're looking at a wheat plant um, and looking at these different leaves each of these leaves and each of these pieces of the wheat plant contribute differently to how much yield we're getting from the leaves. So um, we can kind of break this down in sections. Uh, the head of the leaf actually contributes about 20% of the yield with photosynthetic area. Um, so, you know, they've done research where they've covered that, that head uh, and it's a loss of about 20%. Um, so it's green. It's green for a reason because it has that chlorophyll, it's photosynthesizing and it's producing energy. Uh, the flag leaf of the wheat plant, um, we're looking in that range of, of 40 to 45% yield. Um, and then we get into the uh, penultimate leaf here, we're back in that 20% range. Uh, and the anti-penultimate is more in that 7% range. So knowing this, knowing that a lot of the yield comes from the head, the flag leaf and the anti-penultimate, we know that, or sorry, the penultimate, we know that these are the leaves that we really want to protect if we want to protect our yield. Um, so we're getting into this uh, fungicide timing, you know, this crop, we're, we're well into head, so this would be a head timing application. Um, you know, when do we want to be applying? How do we know if we need to make an application? Uh, and again, if we look down into this crop, you know, we're seeing a little bit of, of foliar leaf disease. Uh, we've had a decent amount of rain down here. Um, so when we, when we ask the question of, okay, do I need to be spraying a fungicide on my wheat crop? There's a few things we want to think of, and I'll always go back to the disease triangle, which many have heard of. Do we have the host, do we have the disease, and do we have the environmental conditions? for that disease to flourish. Um, you know, we have the host, we have the, the, the plant, um, the disease, it's likely that we have these diseases in here. We know we sh we're seeing some of it down here. Um, so do we have those environmental conditions that are conducive? Um, 
and you know kind of tying into that conversation is is what genetics are we using we have the host but how resistant is that host to the disease um, so all that ties into the conversation of should i be spraying um, so we have some disease in the lower canopy here so if we continue to see rain in these conditions and we know that this disease is here the question is is, is it moving up to a point where it's um, infecting some of those major yield contributing leaves um, and typically you know we, we see you know kind of maybe seven to day seven to ten day cycles of some of these diseases um, so every seven to ten days if we have that continued wetting of the leaf um, under the canopy you know that's going to continue to push up uh, and infect some of those higher yield contributing leaves um, so we know that if we see those conditions, we see that disease moving up as we're getting those environmental, those wetting conditions, um, and we know that that host is susceptible, uh, we may want to make a decision to protect that flag leaf before it continues to get up and infect there. Um, again, fungicides are preventative, not curative, so we really want to stop it before it really gets to infecting that flag leaf. And I've been asked, is there a threshold? There isn't really a threshold uh, for when we want to actually apply a fungicide on flag leaves or on penultimate leaves. It really, again, relates to what are conditions like, how susceptible is that host, is it the genetics you're using, um, and um, how much actual disease is present, and that's going to depend on your rotation. Um, there's other factors that'll play into this, like seeding rate, um, uh, fertility, um, but you know, again, all of those will play a role. So now the next question is: is do I spray it, spray it flag leaf, or do I spray it head timing? Um, and you know, we do want to protect those flag leaves, but we also want to protect that head, especially if we are in a fusarium head blight risk area. Um, a lot of Saskatchewan, Manitoba, many parts of, of Alberta are now at risk of fusarium head blight. So should I be spraying at flag leaf timing and then spending money again at head, at head blight timing or should I just be spraying at one? So if you're in an area where you know you have fusarium head blight risk, you've been downgraded historically, um, you know you're seeing seed with, with, F, with fusarium graminarum in it, um, you know you're at risk if conditions are appropriate. So monitor fusarium head blight risk map um, as that flag leaf emerges uh, and if you know that there's risk coming to your to for fusarium head blight um, maybe delaying to that fusarium head blight timing is appropriate so research done by Asif uh, and Dr. Sherry Stridehorse in Alberta looked at Viewfield and Brandon at two different fusarium or two different timings for fungicide, um, one at flag leaf and one at head timing. And what they found of those two different varieties is that um, essentially the yield results in return were the same, uh, whether you're spraying at flag leaf timing or at head blight timing. Um, so if you know you're at risk of fusarium head blight and downgrading, you know, that's maybe where we want to lean towards in terms of protection. But if you see that disease moving very quickly into your flag leaf um, and you know that, that those genetics are, are more susceptible to leaf disease, um, you may want to look at a more earlier timing. So there is no perfect answer for this. It's about monitoring. It's about seeing what's going on in your field, knowing what genetics you're working with. Um, and then making that assessment call of, of should I be spraying at flag leaf or at head timing or at all.